So you got yourself a Cobra 2000 GTL, and you thought you'd update it just a little bit, nothing fancy. You just wanted to stick in some LED lights for the meters. Um, more reliable, use less power. Now some people like to change colors, use blindingly bright ones. It doesn't really matter. But the instant you put LEDs in in place of these two light bulbs, the first thing you're going to notice when you plug your radio back in is your channel display glows. I call it the Cobra 2000 Afterglow. Um, and it's a remnant of the odd-ass power supply circuit that they use in these radios. I'm not going to go into you know in-depth details on that other than to say it's because they switched the ground in this and... The radio still had when you turn the power switch off. Honestly, the radio is not 100% off. It still has eh, roughly two volts floating around on it, but very low current. Um, like I said, it's it's an artifact of this frequency counter module, and the uh, the fact that it stayed there's actually if you look at this, you can see there's two grounds. If we can get the camera to focus. You can see ground. And CB radio. Well, that is also ground, because if you follow that trace down, and that's what actually is switched by the power switch, is the ground. Because you can see right there is ground comes into the power switch and attaches to the main ground right here. So, but I've seen every possible way you can think of to get that afterglow to go away. Now, a common way I've seen people do it is, then what causes that is the light bulbs, when the two light bulbs are in here, those two little light bulbs supply just enough load to the circuit to draw down that voltage. Like I say, it's only two volts hovering with very, very minimal current. And the, the load of those two incandescent light bulbs, these two little guys right here, which are getting replaced in this one, um, but the power that these two small bulbs consume is enough to drag that voltage down basically to nothing. And the channel indicator will no longer glow if you have light bulbs in here. But with LEDs, LEDs are so power conserving that the instant you've replaced those two light bulbs, anytime the radio is turned off, your channels will dim glowly. And you can change the channels. You can actually change the channels and see the digits. Very dim, but you can see them. Now, some people could care less. Me, I'm kind of that way, but, you know, um, there's an easy way to fix that. Now, like I say, I've seen a lot of people use a resistor. Because then it would be common sense. The light bulbs are supplying a load. Why don't I just use a resistor? I'll replace the two light bulbs. And I'll put in parallel across those light bulbs. I'll install a resistor. Well, if you do the math, the size resist resistor that you need is fine. And it works. You know, if you Or if you just use a resistance resistor substitution box and start flipping through it, you get down to the, the lowest uh, resistor resistance value that you can use. Um or the, you know, the appropriate resistance value where the display will no longer light. Well, it's fine. It works when the radio is off. The problem is when you turn the power on to the radio, then the amount of power that's then going to that resistor makes it really hot because it, it was going to dissipate around a, ah, God, I'd have to sit down and do the math again, but um, you end up needing like a, a three watt resistor. Ideally, you should probably use like a five watt resistor. So you need a sizable resistor and it's burning up a shitload of power. The light bulbs that were in here do it so much better because you have to remember light bulbs resistance varies with the filament temperature. <laughs> so, but there's an easy way around that. And what we can do is, is disconnect the power to this display. Now, and this is actually what causes it, because if you look on the schematic here, actually, you can see here's your channel display. And this is the pa the main power, okay? When you turn the power on, it's getting full voltage. Now, I've highlighted that around here, and you follow that down, comes over, and if you see that line there, it also goes up. Well, that goes to the meter lights. You follow that up here, there's your meter lights. And then it also it comes down and goes to the power supply. What we want to do is break that circuit, okay? So basically, you know, cut, more or less cut the line when the radio is off and have it attached when it's on. Um, easiest way to do that for most people, no complicated circuitry involved. You need one part, and that's a miniature relay. So if we flip the radio up here, I've already installed it in this one. That's why there is no channel afterglow. 
just get yourself a small 12 volt relay preferably if you get this size and I'll show you why I say preferably but so you can see there just a little 12 volt relay nothing fancy they lots of manuf if you just to go to almost any supplier or even eBay and just type in 12 volt uh, relay you'll see these little yellow guys this is a, a standard package you can get them in like 5 volt 6 volt this one's 12 volt now everything you need to do can be done directly from the switchboard so you don't even really need to take the top cover of your radio off now you probably will take the top cover of your radio off because you're probably doing this because you're replacing your lights with LEDs anyhow but if you'd already changed them to LEDs uh, and you just want to get rid of that afterglow, you don't even need to take your top covers off. All you need to remove is the bottom cover to gain access to this little area right here. So the way this is normally wired, this is the wire. This black, yes, bl they use black as the hot wire. <laughs> but this, where I have it highlighted in red right here, where it goes into the indicator board, okay, that is actually this wire right here. Now if you look here, you'll see now there's four wires going to this relay. So a relay has a coil and there's actually three of these on this side because this is a double, uh, has two sets of contacts so we don't even need to worry about the pins on this side. You can cut them off, fold them over, it doesn't really matter. And even on this side you only need two of them. But what you're going to do is, you see this blue wire right here comes down and you see this wire right here that's where this black wire originally was. This black wire originally went right there. So just take your solder and iron, touch it to that. It's just soldered like all the rest of these to the bottom of the board. So it doesn't even go through to the top. So just touch that with your soldering iron, pull that black wire off. Solder a new wire onto that. And that's going to run to one terminal on the relay on the normally open contact. Okay, Because you want it when you turn the radio on the relay will energize closing the contact. So you want the one that in the off, when the radio is in the off position, there's no contact. And that would be this one right here. And then this is the common terminal. So this is the one actually, if you imagine it, there's a relay in there and the contact goes like this. This is the how the relay is when it's turned off. When you energize the relay, it flips to the other direction and makes contact with this terminal. So this is that common this is the normally closed and normally open. So we want to pick normally open. So take the black wire off, attach it to the common terminal on the relay. The normally open contact is going to go right back down to right where you just took that black wire off. Now we need power to energize this relay. Again, that's very simple. Now this entire strip, this you see this green, this lighter green right here that runs the whole way down the back side of the board? That is the ground, the DC ground plane. And you see this yellow wire comes up right there. That's also part of the ground plane. It's actually this white wire right here is what's supplying the ground to this board here. And that comes over and, like I say, runs the whole way up there. So we can just take one lead off of the coil right down to there as a convenient place. And then to pick up power, what I use is, is actually, uh, if you follow down here, there's a, uh, what do we have attached there, a white, there's a black, and a white. There's or a blue, a black, and a white. There's three wires that attach right here all together. Run a wire from the other coil contact down to that point. Now that is that will have that floating two volts or so on it, but it's not enough to energize a 12 volt relay. But like I said, you just run the wire down to that. And what this is, this is the supply voltage for the AM lower and upper sideband light bulbs. So when you turn the radio on, there's always right around 11.8 volts. It's not quite 12 volts. It's more than enough to energize this relay. But it's also, like I say, it's a very convenient place because you can see its location. It's so close right here. But like I say, you can then, as a matter of fact, I usually just clip them off. So let me do that. I'll clip off these unused leads. We don't need them. And the reason I say to use these little yellow relays, not only because they're easy to find, it's because they just happen to be the perfect size that once you're done this, you can see this gap in here in between the, the bracket that this circuit board is attached to. This is a snug fit. 
right there. Fits perfectly. The term just far enough away, nothing touches. Now I I would suggest putting just a small dot of glue. Don't put it put the dot of glue in there and then shove the relay in it, or you're really gonna have it glued in there. Just put a small dot of glue. Once you push the relay in there, put a small dot of glue in there and let it dry. That will just ensure that it can never come out. But that's all you need to do. Basically, you're just interrupting the power wire up to the channel display board with a relay. So it, when the, re the radio is turned off, there's no power on it. When you turn the radio back on, it's basically wired up just like it normally would be. It's, it's attached down to where it would normally have been attached. But when the radio is turned off, it's no longer picking up that fan what I call phantom or ghost voltage that is what causes that afterglow. So I hope that helps somebody out. Um, I know that's a common problem. <laughs> and like I say, I've seen so many people do all these between using resistors, trying to do it with uh, transistors. And the problem with trying to use switching transistors is, you know, you want to use a transistor to switch it on and off. We're pretty much anywhere on this circuit board, on the main board where you're trying to pick up the, you know, has a supply voltage when you turn the radio on. There's voltage there when the radio's turned off. It's just really low. Because like I say, this has like a two volt phantom voltage floating on it. And that voltage in a lot of cases is enough to turn on a transistor that you might use in a switching application. So, you know, like I say, this simple requires one part, actually a little bit of wire. But other than, you know, a, a, a little small, because all you actually need for wire is enough to get from here to here, here to here, here to here. This wire, you're just, you know, rerouting. So you need, you know, less than a foot of wire and one little relay, and your glowing uh, channel indicator is no longer a problem. So I hope that helps somebody.